Welcome to Surveillance Law. This course is about government and personal data. It's about reconciling decades-old legal procedures with cutting-edge information technology. It's about innovative investigative techniques and evolving views in all three branches of government about whether those techniques are appropriate. At base, the course is about facilitating legitimate law enforcement and intelligence activities while responsibly safeguarding individual security and privacy. In this course, you will learn some law and a little computer science. My hope is that you will come away with a new tool set for understanding government surveillance practices. And I don't mean just an academic tool set. These issues are playing out in the news every day. The materials in the course draw on cases you might have already heard of, including the contempt citation against Lavabit and the prosecution of the founder of the Silk Road. Now, since we will be working through legal material, this course has to open in that most lawyerly of ways, with a disclaimer. First, while I am a lawyer, I am not your lawyer. We are not entering into an attorney-client relationship. While I very much hope that there will be great questions and vibrant dialogue throughout the course, nothing you say will be legally privileged. You can be extra sure that I am not your lawyer, because if I were, the transaction would look a lot more like this. The second disclaimer I should include is that none of the material in this course constitutes legal advice. Once again, you can be sure that I'm not providing you with legal advice because there is, well, none of this. As a corollary, if you do need legal advice, you should retain an attorney. And that would quite probably look like, well, you get the idea. All right, so that's it for the disclaimers. The last prefatory comment I want to make is that the course is focused on American law, since so many popular online services are based in the United States, and since federal practices have recently stirred up substantial controversy. Throughout the course, try to keep in mind that other nations treat computer security and privacy quite differently. Some are more protective, and some are much less protective. Now let me say a few words about why you might take this course. First, this stuff matters you will learn material that is timely and important. The ongoing controversy about national security agency surveillance is a testament to how relevant this area of law is. By participating in this course, you will be able to engage with current events and national debates more effectively. If your work relates to computer security, you will complement your technical knowledge with essential legal building blocks. And if you are an attorney, you will gain familiarity with a developing and exciting area of law. Second, this stuff is tricky. It's difficult to learn elsewhere. Before designing this course, I went looking for a comprehensive guide to surveillance law, and I couldn't find one. What's more, the details get convoluted quickly. Even very senior policymakers routinely flub specifics. Surveillance issues blend law and computer science, further complicating understanding. And last but not least, this area of law is very easy to misstate and to misapply. Here's looking at you, internet commenters. So my hope is that you will come away with the uniquely nuanced understanding of this area of law. A third reason you might consider taking the course is that you can have an impact. Your voice matters. Informed commentary has played a substantial role in national surveillance debates and can have greater impacts at the state and local levels of government. You have an opportunity to raise the level of discourse on surveillance law. So there's my best sales pitch. Now let me turn to the structure of the course. This first section of the course is an introduction. The balance of the lectures provide a refresher on the American government and legal system. It's sort of like a mini law school. The next unit covers the basic building blocks of surveillance law, using telephones as a simple example. We will work through some of the most common investigative procedures, including subpoenas and warrants. In the third unit, we will apply those building blocks to more modern technologies. Specific topics will include email, web browsing, and hacking into devices. The fourth unit addresses compelled technical assistance, that is, what sorts of help the government can require. We will talk through when businesses have to provide backdoors in their systems, as well as when you have to decrypt your data. In the fifth unit, we shift from law enforcement to foreign intelligence. We will discuss some additional building blocks and compare the two bodies of law. The sixth and last unit covers controversial foreign intelligence activities, including bulk phone metadata collection 
and the PRISM program. We'll talk about both the technical structure and the legal underpinnings of these intelligence activities. The reading for the course consists mostly of primary legal materials, such as statutes and court opinions. I've extensively edited down the documents, hopefully to the bare essentials. Nevertheless, these texts can be challenging to understand and subject to multiple interpretations. I would therefore strongly encourage at least two passes through each document, if your time allows. All the readings will be available online. The course is, at its core, a lecture series with accompanying readings. There will be some assignments, though they are intended primarily to make sure you've been keeping up. You should not find them too tricky. So, that concludes my introductory thoughts. Welcome to the course, and I look forward to sharing the coming weeks with you.